Welcome to The Art of Medicine, the program that explores the arts, business, and clinical aspects of the practice of medicine. I'm Dr. Andrew Wilner, and my guest today is Dr. Jeff Anzalone. Welcome, Jeff. Hey, thanks very much for uh, having me. Looking forward to our conversation today. Well, Jeff, your, your day job is as a periodontist, right? And that, that's going great. But today we're going to talk about your other job, which uh, is uh, the business of medicine and a way for physicians and dentists and, and other, let's call them high earners, although that's certainly a relative term. You know, sometimes high doesn't seem, people say, oh, Dr. William, you're a high earner. It's like, well, it doesn't feel that way. And uh, I think you have a solution to that, right? I mean, or at least an approach that, that might help maybe make someone who's a high earner a, a higher earner. <laughs> is that, is that the, what we're trying to accomplish here? That, that is exactly what we're trying to accomplish. You hit the nail on the head. And uh, all right, so tell me, let's go back to the beginning, how you came in, you know, you want to be a dentist, you're a dentist, you enjoy your practice, it's working well. And, uh, but you had some other experiences that kind of headed you in this direction. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, I, I was getting ready to join, uh, have a comfortable career joining a group practice. But unfortunately, a couple of weeks before my training ended, uh, that fell through. So that left my wife and I with a uh, two month old, no job experience, no 300,000 of student loan debt. We'd already bought a house. We were paying interest only. And the, the worst part about it is, it's, you know, the same thing with dental school and medical school. They don't teach you how to start a business or a practice. You know, we don't get any, any type of business training. So luckily, I'm, I'm from a small town here in Louisiana. So word got out very quickly, as you can imagine. And I had several people sort of bring me under their wing and they, and they showed me the ropes. They taught me. And they allowed me to rent space from them, use their equipment. So, but I, I think that was when I, when I look back and I could tell I had a mindset change at that point because, you know, you're, you're in school, you've got debt, but you're thinking, well, I'm going to get out and make good money, right? So you don't worry about it too, too much. But when all that happened, it was like you went from, I went from having a, potential comfortable income to zero. So I went from that sort of mindset to more of a scarcity mindset. Let, let me interrupt you for a second because I, I wanna make a point of something that happened and, and ask you a question. When that job fell through, right? I mean, you're, you're cruising, you're ready and all of a sudden you get a call or an email and uh, was it through any fault of your own? I am... Um, I still to this day really don't know the reason why they called it off. They just right. said. Well, that's yeah. what I figured because that's the point I wanted to make because my experience in business and, and I think doctors have this experience, you know, when we're consulting with each other, there is always an assumption that you're being completely honest. You know, why wouldn't you? You know, if, if, if I ask you something, you know, well, what about this tooth or that tooth? Should I do this? Should I do that? you know, the, the economics or there's no other agenda. It's like, well, this is the best thing to do. And doctors are used to that, getting honest answers. But my own experience in the business world is that things happen for other reasons mm -hmm. and you're not always getting the best honest answer. And uh, some of the disappointments that I've had in, in business are because people were not being 100% straightforward with me, led me to believe something without actually, you know, saying it or putting it in paper, but we had an agreement that upon that retrospectively fell through and turned out wasn't the agreement that I actually thought it was. I think that yeah. was, that was my number one lesson about the business world um, is that it doesn't run the way the clinical world does. And so that's how you got your start. So how did you respond to that? So that shifted me to a scarcity mode thinking, you know, basically a survival mode. And I actually had to resort back to what I did in high school and college and mow, mow yards again. So I was probably the most well-educated yard man in the United States at that time. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, um, 
we really set some goals to get out of consumer debt and we're able to accomplish that in about seven to eight years, along with, you know, continuing to raise our kids and grow in the practice. But um, a few years after that, we were skiing and I took a fall. I had a kid dart out in front of me, took a fall and I fell and, and I kind of hurt my wrist, which is kind of ironic because this morning my uh, wife took my son, who's 13, to our friend. He's a hand surgeon here, and he actually broke his wrist yesterday playing football at school. So, um, so when I fell, I got up and, and I, you know, being, being a kid, you, you think that you're, you know, invincible, right? So you never think about, you know, being injured until you're injured. And I think that's kind of started me thinking, okay, it wasn't a bad injury, but what if it, what if it had been, what if I'd have broken my wrist and I couldn't have worked for two or three months? Right. I make my living with my two hands. I can't do right. it one-handed, right? At least I don't exactly. have any one-handed periodontist. Yeah. So I never thought about that before. And I said, well, the, my family is relying on my one income coming in from my practice and that's it. So, but I didn't know what else to do, but that started me down the road to looking for other ways to, to get income. And uh, in the meantime, you, by necessity, you just started your own practice, right? When, uh, Correct. After, while mowing lawns, you rented space, you just set it up, you advertise, it's a small town, people showed up now and then. And uh, so I'm sure you learned a lot about business the hard way, just by doing it, right? You have to hire staff. I mean, you basically were an old fashioned solo practitioner learning as you went. Correct. All right, so with the wrist event, you're eight years into this now, some of your debts are paid, but you probably still have some of that $300,000 debt hanging around. You're the no, only- all, all of that was paid off. You paid that off, okay. So Paid so- that off, paid off the house, you know, cars, everything. I just was like, I'm sick of debt. I want to get out. And, you know, that, that was about the eight year mark, I think. So you practice doing well. I mean, you, you could have said to yourself, gee, I'm a successful guy. I'm doing well. I'm paying all my bills, right? Saving a little bit for retirement, things are here. But that risk, that changed something. You injured your hand. You said, gee, this may stop at any minute. What am I yeah. going to do? Can't even mow a lawn when you got a bad hand. So uh, that's, that's true with those, you know, you got to, you got to do it like this with now, not the steering wheel, but it's the, the 360 degree mower. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> so what did you do? So I started looking around, um, asking around, reading books, listening to podcasts for passive income. And it seemed like the majority of the successful people, not just doctors, but other successful people, millionaires had anywhere from three to nine income streams. That was, that was a normal. And I I had one and that, you know, I think the word I've heard it one time said the worst number in business to have is one, one of anything, you know, when you rely on one thing and that one thing goes away, then that's, that's not good. But I had no zero knowledge about real estate. I bought my house, personal residence, that's it. And, and real estate seemed to be what most people were doing. So then I started learning about it and sat down. And I think it's very important if you're married, I sat down with my wife and we made out some goals. But one of the goals was to continue to spend more time with the kids while they're still at home, which trying to get you know, buying a bunch of property, single family homes, apartments, uh, being a landlord that, you know, those two don't go together because you're, you're getting, you're adding more jobs and times. So luckily I found out there was other ways you could get into real estate that would allow you to not be a landlord and started to learn more about that. There's, there's different ways to do it. Um, started with crowdfunding online where you, you put a little bit of money in to something. Um, some of those worked out pretty well, but I had one big deal about three years ago, four years ago, that I invested $50,000 online in an apartment complex in Tulsa. 
And unfortunately, every investor lost their money. Um, but it was no fault of my own because looking back, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. It was basically, I was putting my trust in that website. Well, there because, we go again, right? You trusted these guys to be honest. Uh, and it turns out it was really swampland in Florida. There, there, were, there, was, there was no apartment building there. Well, it was an apartment building, but what they didn't disclose was it was in a crime infested area. More people were moving out than moving in. And the person went in, tried to fix this place up, lost all their money and it shut down. So that was a big lesson right there. And, and that was about the time I started my blog because I wanted to share my experience with people. And as I started learning more about this, I just started putting my information and experiences. And then now it's, it's really taken off. Just, let me interrupt you again, just for those who are too busy to watch this entire program, uh, which will only be about 15, 20 minutes, but I want to ask you, what, how can they find you? What's your blog at address so that I can put that up there? It's a debtfreedr.com. Debt free doctor. So debtfreedr.com. Okay, great. The, the the word debt free doctor was already taken, so I had to go go with debtfreedr.com. Understood. All right. All right. Thank you. Please continue. Okay. So um, so that that started me to with the blog, and um, it was really cool. And as you know, with with what you do with with connecting with other doctors, physicians, dentists. I started having people reach out to me and say, hey, you know, I like, I like what you're writing, you know, keep up the good work. But then I had another group of people that were really interested in my investments, really in the investing that we were doing, interested in the returns, interested in being able to get multiple streams of income. So, you know, you're going to have people that want to retire early. You know, they're, they're sick of working, they're sick of insurance reimbursements going down they're sick of the paperwork they're just they're burned out but then you have other people like myself and, and you and others that enjoy what they're doing but maybe you want to cut back or maybe you want to do something else you know you maybe you want to you know start a mission somewhere but still do your work well having extra streams of income give you options versus the way that I was going with one income stream, you know, putting money in a 401k, hoping that I would have enough to retire on, I don't run out, that doesn't give you a lot of options. So basically just what I'm learning and doing, I'm putting on the blog and it's allowed me to connect with a lot more people and they're a lot more interested. In, and I basically I share the investments that I'm, I'm going to invest in on there and why. So they, so they know what to look for because before I was relying on a website that was telling us, Hey, you know, we get pitched all these deals all the time and we're only getting the best deals out there and putting them on our website. Well, that's, that's baloney because it's, I know it's not true, you know? And as you know, as doctors, we have this big S on our shirt, but it doesn't stand for Superman. It stands for sucker. Because a lot of times, and I've, I've been I've been there too, you know, we we think we're too smart for our britches and, and we're really not. Right. I've often, you know, doctors often have an entrepreneurial idea. I want to start a business, a restaurant, you know, a ski resort, whatever it is. And they forget that to get where they are as physicians, you know, they put in 80 hours a week for seven years. And uh, now they, they took an online course, you know, they got a hundred hours in and they're experts on starting a restaurant, you know, so that uh, many uh, physicians underestimate what, what it really takes to be successful in business. And, and most of them, I think it's fair to say, really don't have the free time to invest what they need to be successful. If they're gonna continue you know, practicing clinically and be good at it, you know, and, and I frankly have been a little disturbed by seeing people who are practicing, but you talk to them, you know, you, meet, you bump into them in the hallway and all they're interested in, you know, is their other business, you know, or the stock market went up today or down, or, you know, I'm buying this uh, new plot of land. I'm going to start a company. Yeah. It's like, well, what about the patient you just saw? You know, there's, there's only so much room in your head. 
you know, and medicine is a pretty challenging, I would say, and a consuming uh, profession to do well. So I'm not saying you can't do both, but I think you have to be very, very careful about uh, looking at the requirements for investment. And what, what's attractive about what you're talking about, this passive income, is you're not going to be the landlord. You're going to work uh, presumably with, with a group of people or by yourself. And it's, uh, I'm also troubled by the term passive income, because I can tell you from personal experience, all the things I've done for passive income, like book royalties, have earned me about a, a penny an hour, I would say, <laughs> uh, if, you, if you look at what's come in versus what I put in. So the, the word, pat, so tell me what you mean by passive income. Why don't we talk about that? Passive income is, is nothing more than money coming in that you don't actively have to, to work for. So you can keep treating patients, but keep getting checks every month or every quarter. But it, it's, it's, it's not easy because you still have to work. You still have to have active income in order to get passive income. And I think that's where the misconception comes in because make, people make it look so easy, but you've got to put in the work you know, up front in order to have that. It's just not like it's going to magically appear. Right. So it's but, like writing a book. You get, oh, I'm getting royalties from my book from two years ago. It's like, yeah, but that book took three years to write. It's, yeah. You know, today I didn't do anything and the check came in. So there's a lot of upfront analysis. Plus you have to have the capital, right? Exactly. And you got to be willing to lose that capital because, you know, real estate isn't magic. Not every deal is going to be profitable, I assume. Is that right? Exactly. So, um, and I think with when another thing that, that happened that, uh, that caused a lot of people to, to rethink, I think their specialty is, is when the pandemic hit. And, you know, many people, including myself in Louisiana, we were shut down for two months and, and people are sitting around going, wait a minute, I've got this, especially for me, owning my own business. It's not like if I work somewhere, that's a little bit different. You don't still have all the overhead, but with two months shutting down, man, if I didn't have these other streams of income coming in, that would have been tough. So I think that allowed people to rethink maybe their income situation and I, and I and I, I'm in, uh, subscribed to several forums online and man, you can, during that March, April, May time, when all that first hit, it was just eye opening, seeing how much people were really had fear for their livelihood. So to me, it's so enjoyable talking to people on a, on a weekly basis and you can just hear the excitement in their voice. You know, I talked to a cardiologist last week from Southern California and she'd heard me on a podcast and she just called. She's so excited. She's just like, you mean to tell me I don't have to work and treat patients till I'm 70? That if I want to get, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, it, yeah, if you want to keep doing it, that's fine. But again, it gives you options out there. And, and I wanted to do something, uh, you know, because I've been screwed over in the past. I wanted to do something that was ethical. And if you go to my website, there's there's no ads, there's no pop-ups for, you know, buy this or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's very clean. And that's that's how I want it because I, um, I, I work and, and I don't have to do it. It's, I want to do it. I, sh I share your view. My website is the same. Every now and then I thought, oh, well, I could have some ads. It's like, no, this is, you know, my website. I make all the decisions I put up there you know, what comes from my heart. I think it's a passion project, right? You're not expecting any kind of, you're not going to make concessions for some sort of return from a third party. So uh, I admire and, that. And my, my website is probably like yours. There's not a day that goes by. And I had somebody this morning that doesn't email me wanting to put, you know, wanting to pitch me something so I can put it on my website and I would get a cut out of it. So you, you got to realize especially in the, in this real estate space, these in, in most, what we're doing is apartment syndications, meaning basically you're taking your money and you're pooling it in with other people, other physicians or high income earners. It's kind of like a mutual fund. Almost you put your money in and you start getting paid. But the, the key is finding a good group that, that work with that's honest and ethical because the group is going to find the deal uh, find the apartment complex. They're going to manage it. They're going to make sure it's run properly. And then after about four to six years, they're going to be the ones that sell it 
but they're also go they're going to be the ones that um, you know pay you your monthly or quarterly distribution. So most people ask the question, "Well, Jeff, how do you find the best deals?" But that's the wrong question to ask. It's how do you find the right operators or sponsors to work with? And luckily, I found a handful, and I'm, I've got a really good one now that I'm almost exclusively working with that that is also a, a physician. And it took me uh, a year of, of meeting with them and, and walking property with them and, and learning about their business model and getting to know them and their family before I was comfortable not only investing myself, but also recommending it to others versus what usually happens. It's somebody would email me, hey, Jeff, we've got this apartment complex. Can you send it out to your email list? We'll, we'll give you X amount percentage. Mm. Sure, that, that's fine. I'll do that. And, and, and there's no uh, due diligence. There's nothing. It's just almost like they're taking the best deal. So you got to be careful. There's a lot of people out there that are targeting doctors that are doing that, but they don't have any relationship with the sponsor. So again, that's that's why I wanted to do what I'm, I'm doing. So any deal that I recommend, I'm personally investing in myself. Uh, okay, we're almost out of time. I have one question. Suppose I, I'm going to give you a call tomorrow and say, Jeff, I want in. How much cash, what's the least amount of cash that's going to make it uh, you know, worth everybody's while so I can be part of this? Give me the, a, a ballpark the, number. Yeah, the, the, the deals that, that my wife and I are personally in, the average minimum investment is $50,000. Okay, so yeah. that's my target. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of programs to where you could use retirement money without being penalized and, and all that. So there's, there's a lot of people that do that. Um, I've done it. Plus, I use after-tax money, too. But that's, that's typically the minimum. Okay. Well, Jeff, I want to thank you for uh, speaking with me today. This has been enlightening. Tell me again your uh, website. It's debt-free. If, actually, I have a free guide for your listeners. So if they go to debtfreedr.com forward slash free guide. It's a, a little passive income guide that I put together. They can download it for free uh, to get started and what we discussed today. Excellent. Well, uh, I'll read that before our next call. So okay. thank you for joining me on the Art of Medicine. Yes, sir. I, I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me.